To say that Bitcoin has captured the imagination of millions would probably be an understatement at this point. And that's completely understandable. Look at the price performance of Bitcoin over the past seven years. It has climbed from $100 to a little under $13,000 today. Those who were buying Bitcoin in its very early days, when it could be obtained for less than a dollar, I'm sure are very happy. I have been asked many times in the comments section of my videos for my thoughts on Bitcoin. It seems many of my viewers are surprised by my lack of content pertaining to digital currency. I thought maybe it was time to make a video. This video is not going to cover every aspect of digital currencies. There are too many aspects to cover in one short video. But in this video, I thought I would, it would be worthwhile covering what I think is the most important property of Bitcoin. All of the others I view as somewhat secondary. Bitcoin doesn't exist on its own. It requires a giant network of computers. There are countless individuals that lend their computing power to the network to solve complex encryption problems required to validate transactions. I've known quite a few people who have done this, and all of these individuals pay a power bill. Why would they lend their computing power to the network? Well, if they contribute to the success of solving these encryption problems, they are rewarded with newly created fractions of Bitcoin called Satoshi. Each of these Satoshis have a value on the market, and so one might consider this payment as a rent for computer time. How much power is involved? According to Digiconomist, it is currently about 75 terawatt hours per year. And this is not a small number. 75 terawatts is 75 trillion watts. So just to put this in perspective, the Bitcoin network consumes as much power as some countries. It consumes more power than the entirety of the Czech Republic and more than half of the power consumed by the Netherlands. This is on a continuous basis. It's no small amount of power to be sure. So we can see that Bitcoin from a power consumption standpoint is nothing to be trifled with. It is certainly significant from the standpoint of resource consumption. Let's ask ourselves the question of how large it is from the standpoint of global commerce. Here's a chart of confirmed transactions per day according to blockchain.com. We can see that the number of transactions per day has grown quite a bit over the past decade. It currently stands at about 300,000 confirmed transactions per day. And by the way, when we refer to transactions, we're referring to the transfer of an authorized amount of Bitcoin from one owner to the recipient. So let's do some math. If we take the 300,000 transactions per day and multiply by 365, we obtain 110 million Bitcoin transactions per year. This is certainly not inconsequential. Of course, we need to compare this to some other measure of economic transaction volume. For this purpose, I'll use the 2019 transaction volume of all of the major global credit cards. Overall, cards like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and UnionPay had transactions totaling $441 billion. Thus, credit card activity is still about 4,000 times greater than that of Bitcoin. Of course, one might see these numbers and think that Bitcoin has uh, quite a bit of growth potential left. But before getting too excited, one needs to consider the energy implications associated with Bitcoin's growth. We've already seen that the Bitcoin network consumes 75 terawatts per year to solve the encryption problems to validate all of the 110 million transactions processed in a year. If we divide the two, it works out to be 682 kilowatts per transaction. Is this number significant? Let's put it in perspective. The average residential power rate in the U.S. is a little over 10 cents per kilowatt hour. At this power rate, the cost of each Bitcoin transaction will be about $68. Now, this cost is only about half of 1% if the transaction is a full Bitcoin at current prices. Certainly doable. But imagine if every transaction creates a frictional cost of $68. Certainly for transactions of $1,000 or less, this will become prohibitive. Think about the amount of power represented by 682 kilowatts. The average house in the U.S. currently consumes 877 kilowatt hours per month. So you mean to tell me that one Bitcoin transaction requires roughly the same amount of electricity required to power the average house for a full month? Yep, that's what it means. What would it take if Bitcoin were to become the dominant means of conducting commerce? 
Let's do a little mental experiment and estimate what would be required for Bitcoin transactions to increase 4,000 fold to rival the transaction volume of all global credit cards. To do this would require 300,000 terawatts per year. This is about 13 times the global current consumption of electricity for all uses. Of course, one might object that that's un it's unreasonable to assume that Bitcoin will completely replace the credit cards. Fair enough. Let's assume that it only grows to rival the transaction volume of a single credit card. This would only require a few times more electricity than is currently being consumed by the world for all uses. Of course, one needs to add on top of that that those who are lending their computers to the network will need to be compensated for all of that electrical consumption through the award of additional Bitcoin. But that's another issue. My conclusion from this evaluation is that Bitcoin will not be used as a currency. It's just too power intensive. Now, this does make one wonder about its being used as a reserve asset rather than as a currency. Gold, after all, is not a currency. It's a tier one reserve asset. Through mechanisms at the LBMA and through its use as a reserve by the global central banks, it lends its credibility to international currencies. What if Bitcoin, instead of functioning as a currency, is to instead function as gold does, as a reserve asset? Well, what would be required is for a large global debt market to evolve that is denominated in Bitcoin. It would require the banking system to adopt Bitcoin as the numerator for transactions. Governments around the world would need to obtain and store Bitcoin as they do gold. They would need to pay an, an enormous sum of money to the current Bitcoin holders in exchange for the needed Bitcoin reserves. Do I see this as a possibility? Oh, probably not with Bitcoin. It is possible that at some point blockchain will become an important part of the global monetary system, but it seems to me that something much more efficient would be needed. Oh, that reminds me. I need to go check the energy consumption of my gold stock. Oh good. It's still zero.